Yeah, thank you very much for your words and for the invitation. I'm uh, very proud to be here. And I wanted to give a quick run through the pain management uh, in Germany and uh, through the German healthcare system. Um, back pain is an yeah, increasing disease and an economic burden um, with a high um, year prevalence and life prevalence percentage. We had an economic, uh, or, uh, enorm economic burden um, with a million of euros every year and uh, indirect costs, uh, costs, for example, absenteeism or uh, incapacity days or for approximately 80% for early retirement requests. And uh, the chronification is uh, yeah, a big problem. Um, every tense case ends with the chronification when it's uh, untreated or inadequately treated. And uh, this is not a problem for us as a surgeon or as an orthopedic or as a physiotherapist. When we um, look for the pain, we have to definite it. You can do it through the duration. Um, you can report it in acute, subacute, or chronic. Chronic uh, starts the, um, yeah, it's not really good shown, uh, starts at 12 weeks after the symptoms. We can uh, differ like uh, for the location. Um, Lumbar back pain is uh, yeah, in the area right here, and uh, this is the yeah, um, torical pain, but the more, uh, the more pain is uh, in this area, which is for us uh, important right now. And we have to differ in non-specific or specific. Um, non-specific is uh, yeah, no clear identification, but we have to look for specific reasons also for red flags, and that's very important because they have to be treated very importantly. Um, we can also uh, define the pain by the severity. Um, here we can use the NRS or the VAS scale, um, but these scales um, have no impairment for the, uh, or have no uh, taken in the um, functional impairments. For the chronic, um, it's uh, a questionnaire um, according from Korf et al. Uh, it's considered the pain intensity and the pain related impairment of daily activities. There are a lot of other um, yeah, question tools for the um, aim to prevent the pain um, to become chronic. Um, for example, the start back tool or the Orobo questionnaire. And we have to identify the risk factors. We have yellow flags, we have blue, we have black flags, and we have red flags. Yellow ones are um, psychosocial um, risk factors, for example, depression, re job-related uh, heavy work or low social support, um, and we have also iatrogenic um, risk factors and others like smoking or overweight. Um, in Germany, for the determination of the chronification stage, we use the um, MPSS, the Mind's Pain Staging System. Does anybody know this system? No? Okay. Um, it's a tool for us to, um, yeah, maybe um, not get a recommendation for the patient, but uh, to see if um, the treatment works. We have a lot of assessments or items, uh, for example, the temporal cause of pain, the pain location, um, the medication intakes, or the use of healthcare. Um, and for example, when we have a stage three, we can um, expect that the pain has no pain relief in 70% of the um, patients. And that's very important for us to uh, yeah, maybe have a look over our um, yeah, possibilities to help the patients. Um, anamnesis, it's uh, yeah, quite normal, I think. Um, we have to detect for emergencies or specific causes and even for extra causes and risk factors. We have clues for specific causes uh, in the anamnesis, like trauma or a fever or older age patients or B symptoms um, or yeah, maybe symptoms for radiculopathy or maybe for XL uh, spondylarthritis and back pain, which is going over 12 weeks or morning stiffness. The extra radical causes are important too. Um, therefore, we expect uh, maybe another problem for the, um, yeah, maybe kidneys or the, for the vascular symptoms um, where we have to look, or maybe psychosomatic diseases or psychiatric diseases. The basic estimation, it's really clear, we have to inspect, we have to palpate, local pressure or percussion pain is really important, mobility test for the lumbar spine, um, lasik sign, um, but <clears throat> the examination has to include the mobility test for um, the hip joints and also for the abdomen and the kidneys. 
Um, we have a supplementary basic neuro neuro neurological examination, um, for example, muscle reflex or Babinski reflex uh, or sensitivity testing. We need an imaging. Um, therefore, we start in Germany with an X-ray and afterwards we're going to the MRI. Mostly we do the MRI, even when um, they had an um, pacemaker, we do the CT scan. But for the uh, further um, planning of the treatment, we need a diagnostic in the hospital stage. Um, sometimes we need also a laboratory um, for, yeah, maybe detect uh, inflammatory or neoplastic causes. Um, therefore, we take a blood sample um, for looking for the CRP level or PCT level. Uh, sometimes we need blood cultures. Sometimes we need biopsies or um, punctures. And um, yeah, this is very important to um, detect the red flag problems. So here is a little uh, algorithm about the treatment options for back pain. Um, you have two pathways. The, not, the first pathway is the non-invasive and the other way is the invasive. Um, so the non-invasive, it belongs that we have um, the possibility to medicate the patients, for example, with non-opioids or opioids or chronoalgenics. Um, it's uh, referred to the uh, pain uh, therapy management according to the VRO guidelines. Um, Non-medicated uh, treatments um, are belonging, for example, the physiotherapist or the um, ergotherapist, rehab sports, and something like that. And others are in Germany, for example, physical therapy uh, or manual massage, acupuncture, and this is all what the patient can do in the non-invasive way. And the invasive way is, uh, yeah, for example, the percutaneous, um, for example, injections, uh, the eye joint, epidural, intradiscal facets, and the others are, for example, denervation, uh, stimulation, or something like that. And when the pain is um, not occurred, or when we have uh, red flags, which we have to treat, the operations uh, yeah, are coming um, into the field, for example, the nucleotomy or the decompression. The another algorithm about uh, practitioners for back pain, um, I want to lead you to this. Uh, we have in Germany two different sectors. We have the outpatient sector and the hospitality sector. The patient is uh, at the beginning and he has to be divided into the uh, area. Sometimes the patient um, takes the decision by his own and he's going directly to the ER, maybe when he has back pain. Um, that could be very similar here in UK. So it could be that you have an ER at uh, 3 in the night, a patient who has uh, back pain and he wants to look what is this. Yeah. And you uh, have now to, uh, yeah, um, cover him and to take him and uh, to look if it's an emergency or if he's going back uh, to the outpatient sector. So um, normally the patients are going to their um, non-specialist medical staffs people, for example, the general practitioners or the family doctors, and they are making an examination or they are getting him through the uh, diagnostics, and when they are finished this, they are going to the specialists or going backwards to the specialists in the non-medical stuff, for example, the physiotherapists. Um, even the specialists have the possibility to make a prescription uh, for the specialist when they don't find any, yeah, maybe things which are treated in the hospital. But both of them, the non-specialists and the specialists, have the possibility to make a hospital admission. Um, and sometimes when they are yeah, proposing uh, red flags in case of emergency or planned. In the kind of emergency, when the patient is coming, um, yeah, maybe you make a diagnostic, for example, an X-ray or an, a laboratory, and when you have uh, conspicuous um, yeah, findings, you make a hospitalization. If it's inconspicuous and the pain is not relief, you have to make a hospitalization. If it's relief, you can dismiss the patient in the outpatient sector. And otherwise, the patient is coming into the outpatient clinic, um, and uh, he is testing for surgical procedure or pain therapy, and when the indication is confirmed, you can get an appointment for the hospitalization. And if it's not, he's dismissal in the outpatient sector, going back to the orthopedics or to the specialists uh, in the non-medical staff sector. So we have uh, three parts. We have the emergency and the hospitalized 
parts, we have the short stationary and the multimodal. Um, it belongs uh, by the capacity days, approximately short stationary means two to five days. The multimodal is approximately eight days. Um, both are planned um, and they are um, maybe in, in covered with interventions. And um, I now want to speak about the multimodal pain therapy. Um, here is the goal um, of the full functional recovery um, using intensive educational staff, somatics, and um, yeah, social um, yeah, response and um, to, to take, like you're uh, here in the um, osteopathway, um, to, to uh, look for the patient as a being, it's a good word, um, and not for the, for the symptoms. The outcome should be a pain relief um, and the improvement of the functionality. Um, we want that the patient can go to work again and we want to give him a positive influence. And when you show it to the literature, the MPMPT uh, shows superior to the conventional therapy and more effective. Um, we had a lot in Germany inclusion criteria um, after we had excluded the red flags um, that belongs to our healthcare systems. When we don't look for the inclusion criteria, um, the German um, insurance companies didn't pay the um, multimodal pain therapy. Um, so when we do this and we want to put the pa as a patient into the M MPT, we have to look, uh, for example, that he has a failed unmodimal therapy or failed surgical intervention um, or drug addiction or failed detoxification or pain maintaining um, comorbidities, for example. Um, and it's also um, very important that the patient is understanding the program content and that he's motivated to uh, make a behavioral change and um, yeah, that he is uh, in the um, possibility to identify his therapy goals. So this is a little deal where you can see how uh, the MPMT works. We have a lot of uh, yeah, specialists. Uh, for example, the most pain therapists are anesthesiologists and not orthopedics. Um, but we have also neurologists and orthopedists and psychologists and also audiotherapists and uh, physiotherapists. And they are working all together. We have um, for the patients, uh, yeah, schedules which you have to, um, yeah, going through uh, with stations where everybody of this, um, yeah, specialist is working with the patient. So it's not belongs only to us as an orthopedist, which we are going to do the, um, for example, infiltration or the denervation, um, it is a teamwork. So when the patient is coming into the outpatient clinic, we have an examination, we look for the imaging, if it's um, yeah, confirmed, and we're testing for the MPMT criteria. If it's not, uh, sometimes we need further diagnostics and the patient is going back at the start, uh, have to do the x-ray or, for example, the MRI, and he's going back to the outpatient clinic within a, appointment and then we are looking again. And if it's approved, um, there's going to be assessment and in the assessment center, uh, every part of the specialist is looking for the uh, inclusion criteria again and um, yeah, then um, makes the decision if the indication is confirmed or not. And when it's confirmed, the patient can start the MPMT with all the um, yeah, um, shown um, yeah, specialties and if not, you have to go back and uh, maybe make a short uh, stop uh, pain therapy or is going back to the outpatient sector. So let me conclude. Back pain is an increasing disease and economic burden. The chronification is uh, particularly problematic. We have to different, uh, differentiate between specific and non-specific back pain. The identification of risk factors are very uh, yeah, important. Um, there are a lot of invasive and non-invasive treatment options. Um, we have the outpatient as a stationary pain therapy. The MPMT is uh, very important in Germany and the goal is the functional recovery and it seems to be that the MPMT is superior to the conventional therapy and more effective. So, thank you for your attention and I hope that you get a little view of our work which we are doing in Germany. Thank you very much.